real, maybe a little bit too real, um, sit down chat about why this channel is so inconsistent and I'm gonna just be putting makeup on because I'm gonna be taking some product photos for Twice Shy today so I thought I would just film a little get ready with me because I wanted to have a little chat with whoever is still watching this channel and isn't solely watching this channel just because I live in Korea. Yeah, which is probably a lot of people so let me preface this by saying I'm not going anywhere aesthetic today so if that's what you're looking for then it's probably best you tune out now and I will wait and see who passes the vibe check. I think that's enough time. Congratulations for passing the vibe check, yay! For those of y'all who have been watching me for a long time, you know that I've had trouble with consistently posting on this channel. Also, for those who have been watching me for a long time, you probably already know the main reason. I guess there's no point in beating around the bush because I'm literally 29 years old and this is my life, so I feel like I have every right to talk about my own personal experiences and for anyone that has a problem with it, um, I know what happened and I know what is the truth, so I'm okay with whatever consequences come from that. My skin is so freaking dry, like I don't know what happened to me, but my skin has been so dry but also oily, combination skin. So I asked y'all for help and you were like, did you try primer, did you try setting spray? And I was like, oh, no, but I will. So my skin is oily and my makeup separates off my skin. I'm gonna spray with setting spray before I do my makeup and after. I was getting pretty deep and then I got distracted. I am really bad at multitasking and I'm always trying to do a million things at once. I have a thousand different hobbies but I'm not good at anything because I start things and I don't finish and I get absolutely, absolutely obsessed with things. For a while, I feel like when I first started getting back into YouTube a couple months ago, that was one of my things. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna be obsessed with YouTube now and I'm gonna go hard on YouTube. And then I remembered, oh, I had really traumatic experiences on YouTube in the past and I can't just forget those as easily as I thought I could. I like to believe that I am a really mature person and I can forgive people and move past things and move on with my life and not let things hold me back. But also there's this part of me that's like a fucking elephant. I'm like. No, I will always remember that. I forgive way too easily and way too quickly, but I will never forget. And that's not something that you can really change. I have read so many self-help books, done meditation, everything you can do to move on from the past. Because when you're living in the past and the future, that really doesn't do anything for you because the present is all you have at the current moment. Your past influences the present and the future, but I guess I shouldn't go off on a tangent right now. I guess I should finish one thing. But by the way, a friend recommended this cushion foundation to me. It's by Nature Republic. It's the Zika Green Derma Cushion Foundation. It's supposed to not come off when you wear makeup with a mask. But like I was saying, y'all, I think that I've been having trouble with staying consistent on YouTube because I have all of these really great feelings toward YouTube. I love YouTube so much. I watch so much YouTube. I really do love interacting with people on YouTube and to an extent I really do like making videos but there's still that part of me that just has really really bad feelings towards YouTube like as if YouTube is kind of tainted to me and I really don't want to give, I'll just say her name, Carrie, I, I don't want to give Carrie that much credit and I don't want to put all of that on her <laughs> because no matter what she did to me that situation was given to me for some reason and I'm responsible for whatever actions I do after that. I'm responsible with handling that situation and I'm responsible for my emotions and moving past it. That's all on me so if I can't do that then I can't blame her for that. If anyone is upset by me talking about this now, I'm sorry but <laughs> I'm not trying to bring up drama for any kind of reason because honestly if I really cared about getting views and starting drama for views or for more followers. I would have made videos on this <laughs> when it was actually relevant and not years later, so. Like I said, I can't put that on Carrie, like, oh, I'm not consistent on YouTube and I'm not super successful on YouTube and don't have all of these followers and views because of her, because it's not because of her. It's because I chose to stop doing YouTube when she did what she did 
because of how I was feeling and how I couldn't control how I was feeling. I was scared, I was angry, mostly scared, but I was angry and I straight up just lost motivation for YouTube because for YouTube, you need motivation more than anything to stay consistent because obviously YouTube is dying. You don't get as many views as you used to. You can't grow your channel as easily as you used to. So you really have to just have a really, really strong passion for making videos or what are you even doing on YouTube, right? You're either motivated by views and followers, which I feel like Carrie kind of falls into that category. Anytime you get to the point to where you're so, so motivated by that validation that you get from external sources, like your SNS page, your so social media likes and views and followers, those things that aren't real, <laughs> you know, in any sense of the word that aren't real, if you're motivated by that, then you can stay on YouTube. You won't necessarily be happy, but it'll keep you posting on YouTube. Or if you're making a lot of money from YouTube and you're motivated by money, then yeah, you'll stay posting. But for me, I'm not motivated and I've never been motivated by money or views or followers. Of course, all of those things are nice. I'm not gonna lie and say getting a lot of views, getting a lot of followers, earning a lot of money isn't incredible because of course, like who doesn't want that? but also that's not what makes me happy. That's not what brings me happiness in my life. What makes me happy, <clears throat> personally, personally what makes me happy in life is keeping my peace. <laughs> so before when I was doing YouTube, when I thought I had a stalker that was <laughs> trying to ruin my life basically, that was the opposite of keeping my peace. That was making me so unhappy so incredibly stressed. I don't even know what words to describe, but obviously it didn't make me feel good. So I was thinking, okay, YouTube makes me feel like this. I can't even sleep at night. I can't even go to work with all of this going on. So why am I on YouTube? I don't care about the money. I don't care about the views. I don't care about the followers. Of course, I care about the followers. I care about, I really love talking and engaging with y'all, but I don't care about the number. I don't care what the number of followers, the number of views. Okay, well, if I'm not passionate about making videos, about making money, about getting views, then why am I miserable? <laughs> why am I letting myself feel this way? And that's the thing, y'all. Like, no matter what Carrie did, I let myself be upset for this long. I could look at it like, where would I be now? Maybe I would be super successful with my business if Carrie wouldn't have done what she did because then I would have been um, posting consistently on YouTube. Sorry y'all, I, I broke out like on my neck last week because um, I get really bad hormonal acne, so sorry. What was I even saying? Oh yeah. So I could look at it like, oh, where would I be now? What would my present be like if I would have changed the past and I would have continued posting videos even though I felt like shit and even though I was scared out of my mind and even though I had all these terrible feelings connected to YouTube at the time. I could look at it that way and compare like, oh, where would I be now and feel sad about it. But also I can look at it like maybe I wouldn't be where I am now mentally or maybe I wouldn't even be in this apartment. Who knows? Maybe this, maybe that, maybe I would be worse off in a lot of ways. Who knows? Nobody knows. But Everything happens for a reason, and I guess I'm stronger than ever, but not really. What was I saying? I just turned the camera off for a second. Losing motivation, <laughs> losing motivation on TikTok for people that are on TikTok. It's like, I feel like anything you post about Korea in a positive way, of course, it'll do well, and there will be people that are like, oh, you're a Korea boo, but I mean, I'm almost 30 years old. I, I'm okay with people saying whatever the fuck. It's just annoying. It's just annoying that whenever you try to post something actually real, not necessarily negative, but whenever you try to post a real experience, people jump straight to leave the country then, leave the country then. I mean, babe, I've been here for seven years. If I didn't like living in Korea, I wouldn't be here. If I was miserable, I would leave. That's the that on that. I'm just gonna tell it like it is and whoever doesn't like it, just be mad. <laughs> a lot of times these days, people just wanna be mad and I get that. When you're mad, you wanna be mad. That's how I've kind of come to terms with this whole thing that happened with Carrie. 
even though I never really got a resolution, her and I have never even met in person. We have hardly even spoken, so it's kind of hard to get that, what is it called? Closure. It's, it's really impossible to get that closure when you don't have communication with that person. I've kind of had to come to terms with it after realizing that for someone to go out of their way to try and hurt someone that they have never met over the course of, you know, almost a year, for someone to go to that extent to bring a stranger down, you know, that person is not in a good place mentally. And I've realized that. Hurt people hurt people, as I say. But yeah, you have to process why you're doing that and that doesn't make you feel good. Maybe it makes you feel good in the moment. Okay, bringing this person down makes me feel better about myself because it brings them down to my level. Carrie obviously wanted to bring me down for a reason, which I guess I could look at it now like, okay, I guess she looked at it like I was above her in some way. So I guess I should be flattered, but also nobody wants another person to feel hurt. And she must have been feeling some kind of way to, to do those kind of things. So no, that doesn't make me feel good. And I really hope, I really, really hope that she's doing better now and that she's not doing those kind of things. And I hope that she's not um, seeking validation from social media like before, because you really can't be happy when you're living that way because that's not real. It's like waking up in the morning and trying to fill an empty cup with holes in it. Like it'll never be full. I don't know why I held, held up on talking about it for so long. I guess because I just didn't want to bring any sort of negative, any more negative energy to my YouTube channel. And that's the thing too, when you are complaining about something, if it's your personal experience, you can't help if the truth is ugly. And when you're just talking about a person and what happened, if that person comes off in a bad light, sorry, they're probably coming off that way because of their actions. I'm not scared to talk about it because there is nothing that I did that I'm ashamed of or that I'm hiding. Nothing can be exposed really. Carrie and I don't have a relationship. We've never had a relationship. It's totally valid for the people who saw Carrie's video who have never heard of me before to be wondering, well, if Carrie did all of these things to Rachel, then she must have had a reason. Like Rachel must have done something to her to make her act in that way. And yeah, I would think the same thing too, honestly. I would be think thinking the same exact thing, like, oh my gosh, this girl was like stalk stalking this other girl and coming for her boyfriend and coming for all her friends. So there must be some reason that Rachel is not saying or that Carrie is not saying, but um, let me tell y'all the truth. Um, no. Like I said, her and I don't have a relationship. We had messaged back and forth a few times on different forms of social media, but no, there was no reason. I know she was paranoid and thinking that I was doing these things that I wasn't doing. It was kind of like a one-sided thing on her part. She had all these assumptions in her mind about me from seeing my social media over the years, I guess. And of course you form your own assumptions about people from seeing their social media, especially when you've been following them for years, like on personal things like a blog or YouTube, you, you feel like you know them. And a lot of you probably feel like you know me. And I feel like a lot of you do know me. like. You really do. When you message me, I'm like, I thought you would like this. And it's a meme and I'm like, yeah, same. But also you have to realize that forming assumptions about people and your opinions about people aren't the reality. Sometimes you see someone online and you may think that they're a really terrible person. Like, oh, that girl, she looks so superficial. She must be a bitch, blah, blah, blah. And maybe you got that vibe from her, but that doesn't mean that that's true. And the same goes for the opposite. A lot of people would look at Carrie and say, oh, this girl, this girl is so, so sweet. Oh, she, you know, she's kind of the girl next door vibe. And, oh, she would never hurt anyone. This can't be true. Like Rachel must have done something to her. You know, this is not the kind of person that she is. You know, there must be some other backstory to this. And what I have to say to those people is, the truth hurts, <laughs> like, 
I mean, of course, there are a lot of things that I don't want to believe. When you think someone is a certain way, that goes the same when you're dating someone and you love that person, so you try to see the best in them and you think that they can do no wrong, especially you know when you're a kid and you look at your parents as if they're some like ethereal being, like they can't make a mistake and they can't do anything wrong because they're your parents. But then you get older and you realize, wow, they're not perfect and nobody's perfect. And even the people that you look up to online, even if one person were to vlog every single day and you feel like you know that person so well, you don't because they're showing you what they want to show you. You can edit your video however you want to. I could edit this video to make me look a completely different way than I am, but you know, what's the point in that? What's the point in having all of these people that admire you and love you for something that you're not? How can you feel how can you feel good from that? I just don't I just don't get it. I just don't get it. Like maybe me posting this video will turn a lot of people off. Like, Rachel, I thought you were so sweet. I thought blah 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 blah. Like I am. I am sweet. But a person can be sweet and can also <laughs> Be real and the truth is not always pretty well, I'll say that again, the truth is not always pretty and you can't help that. I really can't. I wish I could. I wish I wish real life were prettier. I also wish that everything could be aesthetic, cozy vibes all the time and every girl on YouTube could be that sweet girl next door that they appear to be, but it's just not it's just not the truth. It's just not. I think I'm almost done, but let me let me compose my thoughts a little bit more and and I'll be right back. Okay, y'all, I went and got some lip liner and lipstick I'm gonna put on, but I guess I should wrap up this video because it's getting pretty long, but I just wanted to say that I'm so, so thankful for the people who have been encouraging me to get back to YouTube and keep posting. I know a lot of y'all totally get the reason why I stopped posting for so long and why I'm so back and forth with YouTube. But also, it's just so frustrating that the video that Carrie put out, which of course is on her channel, so her viewers um, that don't know anything about the situation, they're going to form different opinions, of course, right? But when you know that the truth and what happened was so much worse than even what she said in her video and the fact that she deleted and is deleting most or all negative comments on that video it's just like what's the, what's the point in apologizing if you're not going to be real with what happened and if you're going to delete any sort of negative comment which is just like trying to clean up an image and so that any other person that watches this video watches that video and goes and looks at the comments like that they form a different opinion, a different opinion about her than they would have formed if those negative comments were still there and if she would have been more detailed in her video about what happened. She knew that the things that she did were so, were so personal to me and that I probably wouldn't go off and be so detailed about exactly what she did and what she said behind closed doors because it's just really hurtful and really personal to me. So yeah, I'm not gonna, disclose like specifics of what that was but it's a lot worse than what was depicted in that short video that she did post so it's just really hurtful to see of course the hundreds of thousands of people that watch that video be so quick to write off what she did as but i know she's not that kind of person she could never do that so okay i mean everyone is free to believe what they want to believe and Whatever helps Carrie sleep better at night, if she, that's her channel. So honestly, if she wants to delete every negative comment, that's totally her right. If she wants to block people who are saying anything positive about me, then that's totally her right too. Just nobody wants to get hated on on social media. Like, of course, when you're getting comments telling you that you're a shitty person or something, you don't want to see that, but that doesn't change what happened. You can't erase, you know, what happened. So I don't know what I'm trying <laughs> I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm covering up my neck pimples. 
I don't even know what I'm trying to say y'all. I don't even know what this video was. Sorry if this comes off, if anyone is hurt by this. If anyone sees me in a different light now, then I'm really sorry. I'm really like want to be friends with all of y'all who even still watch this channel. That makes me want to stream on Twitch so we can talk live and everything, but I'm so thankful for the people who come to my Instagram or come to TikTok and comment like, when the next YouTube video? I'm like, oh, dude, that's so sweet that y'all still care about my YouTube channel, but oh God, I'm like sweating right now. I'm just really, really thankful that if there are still people even here who care about me and I guess I should go start with those twice shy TikToks, but thank y'all again and I love you so, so much and hopefully this is a new beginning where this channel is um, transforming into just something more real. Not like my other videos weren't real because they were, but I just want to break down the wall even more if that makes sense. Okay, I need to stop. I need to stop, I need to stop here, but I love y'all so, so much and Please like this video and stay subscribed. Don't unsubscribe, please. And I'm gonna go get on TikTok now. Love you. <laughs> Bye.